All right. Hello and good evening. My name is Jared Hansen. I'm a prototype development engineer, and I wanted to take a second to show you. I can save a lot of money if you're looking to develop a quick um, LCD like touchscreen control system. Uh, and this example will be this linear rail you see in the background. I'll go ahead and make that move so you can see it. Um, and we'll go through how you can make your own uh, user interface controls um, and have like different faults, you know, so if errors occur. Like here you can see it erroring out, telling you to inspect this machine, etc. And we're going to run through all of that. I'm going to provide all the files. It's going to be all free software um, downloads that you'll need, and uh, all the parts I'm using are very low cost and available on Amazon. That said, if you're looking to hire out your control system needs, or have your system developed for you, uh, feel free to use the link that will be in the description to reach out uh, and we can discuss your project and estimate it out for you, see if the price works for you. Cool. So let's jump right in and I think it would be best to start off with showing you the LCD screen um, and the controls and then we'll jump back in and show you how to set it up for your system. So let's do that real quick. Quick example of actually using the LCD screen as a touch screen. So Right now we're homing. Sorry about the mess of wires. And like this is this was just a scrap panel. Uh, so, you know, my wife built a lot of these panels. Uh, we mount the scrap ones up here if we mess them up, and you know these just get used as test panels. However, uh, running through. So now it's been homed. You can do an auto run. It's going to allow the technician to also or the operator to, you know to manually override and make it move. Uh, you can set and change your acceleration and speed settings and you can add in like nice color changes to acknowledge that it's been pressed etc not change your ui background and all that but my favorite is just solving faults because it's kind of cool to you know have an error readout of a fault uh and then being able to clear that error having the system home um all that so that said let's jump back to the computer and i'll use an lcd screen simulator for the rest of it so that we can see the code and the changes live Okay, so now let's talk about how to set this up for your system. Um, it's pretty straightforward and easy. I uh, try to keep it all on one page and you know under like 60 lines of code. There are you know hundreds more on the back end, but you shouldn't have to leave this page of the Arduino code. So if you're in the user settings.h tab, uh, you should be able to stay here and be able to configure it for your system. So. We'll run through each example if we'll have time. We'll also do show some of the next end stuff you can do. Um, you know, like changing the background, moving the buttons around, adding buttons, you know, stuff like that. But for now, let's do the bare minimum to get you going. And again, if you ever need help, feel free to reach out. Let's see. So first up in this, code is the debugger. So the debugger for the Arduino is this. You see the serial monitor is reading out a lot of different information. You can see right now it's hit the forward limit switch. I put it into the error state and it's debugging error. Um, this is great for development but not, necessary, uh, not necessarily uh, needed once the system is complete and, you'd rather, and you're going to install it and you're not going to have it connected to a computer anyways. This is useless. You can turn this off and make the system run even smoother by setting it to zero because it will stop outputting here. So let's upload and you're going to see a lot less. There are a few things that will read out, but they're going to be a lot less than if it was normally running with the debugger set to on. So all you're probably going to see is like system on. Yeah, because those are going to happen every time. Cool. What else? So we have the forward limit switch. All right, so we're going to do the driver settings and wiring. Uh, I can show you the quick wiring diagram. It's just defining where the limit switch goes. Sorry, I forgot to draw in the two ground wires. Maybe I'll try to attach it in the video link. So I just want to run through this real quick. So these always are these also go to ground. But we're talking about the pulse pin, enable pin, and direction pin here. And you can see where they're wired uh, respectively, how the separate motors wired to the driver, and we're using TX and RX2. Um, that's important to remember. And if you're using a larger Nexon display like mine up there, you have to provide a 5 volt power supply addition to the Arduino. You can't wire it directly to the Arduino if you're using a large Nexon. Some the small ones, like the 3.5 inch Nexon, uh, perfectly fine. But your Nexon will come with instructions on how to, if that's required. Cool. Um, so we've wired these two. It's important to note that your limit switches need to be attached for this code to work. Need to be attached to interrupt pins. So Let's say, for example, 
you wire it and when you hit the rear limit switch pan it faults instead of hit the forward limit switch pan. You could just swap these or you could rewire them. That's easier just swap them in the code and go ahead and test them uh, to make sure they're right before you. you could even test them before it even runs. Uh, just make sure they're interrupt ends. What's next? Um, you don't have to use an interrupt pin. Sorry, side note, if you go into the setup and you rewrite all the code to work without an interrupt pin, but it's gonna be much easier if you use interrupt pins. Define which pins you're gonna to use to wire your stepper. So if your direction pin is wired to 10, write 10 here, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Those are any digital pin um, that you wanna use. So next we have the unique driver settings. Um, these are really useful, so like this one especially, it's kind of a rare situation, but maybe your driver, if you're not using the exact same one, you plug everything in and then nothing works. Like our, the motor's disabled. You can just move it by hand, you can spin it by hand, um, it's not even enabled. What you could do is change this to the opposite to try that. Um, so mine requires the true statement, because mine is low trigger, uh, but if yours is high, um, We'll show that in a second. So I'll upload and show you that what that could look like. So once this is done uploading, you see now it's frozen because it's uploading to the Arduino. Let's start blinking again. All right, so we've uploaded. I'm gonna click home and you see nothing's happening even though it thinks and it's trying to home um, and it's disabled still. Cause I can physically move it. Um, that's because my driver requires a low signal. So I'm gonna change this back to true and re-upload, and that'll fix that problem. Next is your direction setting. So let's say you've wired everything up. Your stepper motor runs the opposite direction like uh, that you want it to. So instead of going in reverse during homing, it goes forward. What you could do here is just change this to true, same thing, without going into all the code and changing that. You just change it to true, upload, and now we'll go the opposite direction. So once this finishes uploading, you see it's uploading now, it's freezing. I'm going to run it and we're going to see it run forward. So since mine's not meant to run forward, it's going to hit the forward limit switch and it's going to fault saying, hey, that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. So now it's running forward during homing because I've changed the direction setting and it hit and now it's erroring saying to inspect the machine. So I'm going to pull it down and clear the errors, um, but it's going to do the same thing. Just like me pressing, if I tried to home, it's not going to home because my system's backward, but Let's run to the next things. So we're going to swap this back. And that will correct that issue. OK, there's a lot of notes there for those as well. Now we only have three main things left. We'll shut this zero monitor, shrink it down. Uh, main distance, main speed, and main uh, user interface speed adjustment settings. So our main distance settings are important and these are what you dial in during testing. So like this is steps to get off your limit switch during homing. So what that is, is once it's ran back to the rear limit switch, it's then going to back off that limit switch until the limit switch stops being clicked. And then it's going to, so it's gonna click, back off, and then it's gonna move up and away from that limit switch just slightly uh, based on what you want. So. If Yours doesn't get all the way off the limit switch. It clicks the limit switch down, doesn't fully release it. You can increase this number. So increase it like some crazy, re-upload, and it will then um, put it much further up the rail. Or if you need less, maybe you're using very small read switches, you can do less. Okay, home travel distance. This is a generic value. Um, this is just how long would we let it go in reverse. If you had a really long linear rail, this number's gonna be large for you. If you have a very small linear rail, the number's gonna be small for you. Um, it just depends on how many steps to travel across your linear rail. And you can dial that in just by testing. And what else? We have run distance. So this is how far to run after the new zero point. So it homes, clicks, releases, offsets, and that's its new home. So in this example, I changed this from 800 to 2000. So now it's going to go really far after homing. It's going to stop. And when I put auto run, it's going to go too far because this run distance is going to allow it to run all the way to the forward limit switch. So let's do that example. And 
uh, to help you get a gist of how that would work. So I'll say you just wired this for the first time. Hopefully you're being safe, of course. Um, but you've honed the system. It's running back, as you can see. That the center. Okay, so now it's going to go really far forward, or about halfway in this case. And now if I go into auto run, it's going to go too far because my auto run setting is too high for the remaining length of this uh, rail. So it's running forward. It's going to hit that forward limit. Okay. Now you can see it erroring and spike machine. Same thing. You can disable it. If I can reach up there and pull it down. Clear the errors, get home again, but it's going to continue to have that error. What you could do, if that was your situation, it's always running into the front, just reduce this, let's say, let's say it's 1,000. You'd upload that, and that will probably actually still work because we had a total of 5,000 at the beginning. This was 800. So you just play with your settings like that. Once it's done uploading, all right, we'll try it. So we can increase the speed, make it a little faster. Just clicked, it's offset. If I put it in auto run now, you see it just doing a very small back and forth auto run. Okay. And the way this code works, in case you're interested, it, the forward dials also only let you run the length of the auto run length, because it assumes that that's the length, the full length of your rail. Okay. So let's change these back. In case you bought the same parts, the code should work out of the box for you here. And then we have speed settings. So for those of you that are sticker, sticking around, um, home speed is 1,000. Uh, that's just a generic baseline. So if we uploaded, it's what's going to be shown on the display the moment it started. Maybe if you have a product uh, and you're incorporating code like this and you want it to be uh, only have a set amount or where it starts at. So you can see it just uploaded, it's fresh, and it's, that's the base setting. Okay, then you have your acceleration. Uh, so that's your base acceleration for homing. So this is your home speed, so your base setting for homing speed, base setting for homing acceleration. The ones you're seeing on the screen there were actually these two, which is the stepper run speed and the stepper run acceleration. The homing speed is separated, but it adjusts when you adjust the buttons for the other speed. Generally, I like to have a very slow homing speed um, for plants just so everybody has a chance to, when they're first starting up the machine, it's very slow, gives everybody a chance to react if like they were just messing around and they you know hadn't cleared the table or whatever. But you can adjust those if you'd like. Then we have the most useful version of the speed settings, which is the user interface speed adjustments. So that's uh, speed adjustment per button press. So that's talking about how much do you want it to change per button press. And if we go back, you can see that. So if I push the increase speed, it went up to 1500. I press it again, went up to 2000. If I decrease, it goes down 1500. It's not going to let you go below 200. It's not going to let you go over 3000 in this one settings. And that's shown here as well. So that was the adjustment. It goes up 500 at a time, it goes down 500 per button press, um, and it has a minimum of 200, and stepper max speed is 3,000. So if you wanted to go much faster, you could go up to like 5,000 and upload that, and then you'd have a much faster um, linear rail. I'm gonna save it as 3,000, but we'll show that now. So now it's got the new code once it finishes uploading. Okay, so I can increase it now all the way to 5,000. Cool, same thing for Acceleration has its own setting. As you can see, it's going up by two and down by two. And that's because it's part of the code is here. So adjustment per press of the acceleration is 200. The minimum acceleration is 200 and the max acceleration is 2000. Cool, so that is the most useful part of the code. Or you, if you're doing this exact system, you shouldn't have to leave this page. Um, let me know if y'all would like longer video where I go through you know, all these hundreds of lines, how the interrupt functions work, how we debounce if your limit switches are triggering a lot. Um, that's something you can work on there is debouncing um, or use a capacitor on the limit switches to uh, help with that if you have a very noisy system. Um, how we set up the next in and add buttons, take away buttons, dictate what the buttons do. 
um, how we change color of things, how we do the blinking effects, things like that, um, are all very useful. But I don't want to make a super long video that nobody's interested in. So, cool. And again, if you're looking to hire this out, um, this is what I do professionally, and you can find a link in the description to contact me. Okay, thanks. Bye.